This video is sponsored by Unity. In this video, we're going to look at Scene Machine in Unity. This is an excellent feature that lets you easily control your cameras with tons of options. Scene Machine is great for gameplay and also to handle cutscenes. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so Scene Machine is a camera system that gives anyone working with cameras the ability to create complex behaviors without having to write any code. So if you're an artist, designer, or just someone who wants to make a short film inside of Unity, then Scene Machine is exactly what you need. Here we're going to look at how Scene Machine helps us very easily set a target for our camera to look and follow, play around with values to make our camera work exactly as we want it, set up multiple cameras and smoothly interpolate between them, and in the end I will also showcase how Scene Machine also works in 2D. Now this video is an interesting one. What I'm going to do here is essentially a smaller video version of a Unity and Learn Premium course. So if you like this and then want to learn more, you can check out the entire course as well as many others by clicking the link in the description. Unity to Learn Premium is currently part of the Mega Bundle sale going through March 31st. So you can get one year of Learn Premium along with $1,000 worth of assets and tools for 90% off. Unity to Learn Premium is designed for those who want to accelerate their Unity skills with advanced learning content. There are over 350 hours of learning content on the platform, including a 15-hour course on using AI in your games and a 22-hour course on mastering C-sharp. So if you've been meaning to look at Unity to Learn Premium, then this is your chance. For the normal price, you can get it through the bundle alongside tons of awesome assets and tools. The link in the description is also an affiliate link, so if you pick up anything through there, you'll also be helping out the channel. So check out the Mega Bundle sale, get some awesome assets and tools, and check out Unity and Learn Premium. Thank you to Unity, and thank you to these awesome supporters for making this video possible. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Okay, so as I was saying, Sin Machine is all about making complex camera movements simple. Sin Machine does not replace your normal cameras, but rather it works on top of them. So you have a brain and a bunch of virtual cameras. Then those virtual cameras can be animated, move around and do anything you want. You can make them follow an object, look at something and cut or blend between different virtual cameras. The brain processes all that data and creates the final shot. Here I will demonstrate Sin Machine mainly working in 3D, but everything works exactly the same in 2D as well. All right, so let's start using it. So over here, I am in a basic scene. Over here I have my basic player character and I can move them around this nice small map. And as you can see the camera right now is on a completely fixed position. I covered this character controller in a previous video. All I did was change the Y movement for Z movement and just like that now this character is moving in 3D. So we have a nice demo scene, now let's use Sin Machine. First of all we need to add it to our project. So open up the package manager, then scroll down until you find the Sin Machine and click on import. And just like that, Sin Machine is now added onto the project. You can confirm that it was installed correctly by checking all the way up here that there's a new Sin Machine menu. All right, so with Sin Machine installed, let's start adding the main component, which is the brain. The brain is the component that acts as the main hub for all of the other Sin Machine components. So it takes control of the camera and then allows you to work with various Sin Machine virtual cameras. So let's select our main camera and then we're going to add a component. And then here we go into Sin Machine and add the Sin Machine brain. There's the brain component. And as you can see, there's tons of options to customize it exactly how you want it. But for now, let's leave everything at the defaults. And now that we have our brain, we need a virtual camera. The virtual camera is what actually defines the behavior of our camera. So let's go up into our menu bar. So click on Sin Machine, and then in here, create a virtual camera. Once you do, you can see a new game object has been created in the hierarchy. And if we inspect it, we can see that it has a Sin Machine virtual camera component. And over here, as you can see, we have tons of options. Now, if you've ever manually worked with cameras, then you know how it's quite a bit tricky to get them to simply follow and look at an object. In here, all we have to do is set these two fields. So over here I have my character in my scene, and I want this virtual camera to always be looking at it. So to do that, just drag the character controller onto the look at field. And just like that, you can see that our virtual camera immediately snaps onto our target object. And just like this, if we try to play our scene, 
And if there it is, the camera is pointing towards my character. And as I move around, the camera correctly tracks my character. All right, so here you can see by just setting a simple field, we have our camera correctly tracking a special object. Now over here, the virtual camera has tons of options that you can play around with. For example, over here, we can click on the aim tab in order to expand it. And here we can play around with any of these values. Now, the main thing is the ability to add a dead zone and a soft zone. So down here, we have the dead zone width and the soft zone width and height. Visually, we can see some nice helpful gizmos. So as I increase the dead zone width and increase the height, and there you go, you can see a little rectangle right in there. So there's an air right down the middle, then one outside of here and another one way out here. So the middle one is the dead zone. Then this one out here is the soft zone and then out here, it will never reach. So whilst our character is inside of the dead zone, then the camera will not move at all. So as I move my camera in there, as long as I stay in there, the camera does not pan, does not move, does not do anything. Then outside we have the soft zone. And as soon as my character moves into the soft zone, there you go, the camera now moves around in order to make sure that it's always looking at my character. Then here we also have horizontal and vertical damping. So right now it's falling pretty fast as soon as my character moves. And if I increase it by quite a bit, then all of a sudden it will track the character, but it will track it much slower. Then the red area is the end of the soft zone, which again, we can still modify in here. And that means that as soon as the character goes outside, our camera will track it instantly, regardless of the horizontal damping. So as I move, I move away and yep, there you go. As soon as I go into the red area, it starts falling instantly. So you can see how just by dragging a target game object and setting a few options, we already have some pretty complex behavior. Now for here, the other field that we have is the follow field. And with the follow field, we also have the body in here that we can set on for our options. So for example, let's drag our character controller onto the follow field and it instantly snaps right in front of the character. So then here we have the follow offset. So let's put it up. And again, the camera is always pointing towards the character. So let's put it and push it a bit away, just like that. So with both of these, now our camera will look at the target and follow it. So he's right in there. And as I move to the left, you can see the camera panning to the left, panning to the right, moving forward and moving backwards. For example, let's slow down the movement speed and let's increase the horizontal damping on our look. And now if we move, yep, there you go. You can see that he follows and he goes just like that. So as I move away, the camera is rotating towards it and then slowly moving in order to go onto this perfect follow offset position. So again, here we have some pretty complex behavior without having to write any code. Although obviously, if you wanted to work with some code, you could still do it. For example, you could easily swap out the target look at with a different object. So even while the game is running, let's say now I wanted to point at the cube and there you go. Now it's pointing at the cube and following the character. So I move the character and the character moves, but it's looking at the cube. Another option we have is having multiple virtual cameras. So let's put this one still following the main camera. And now let's make another virtual camera. So we go into Cine Machine, create a virtual camera. Okay, so I had the new virtual camera. This one is just looking at from a fixed point with a bit of a different field of view. And if we play, so first here we are with our camera correctly following and moving along with the player. And now on the second camera, if I increase the priority above the first camera, as I increase, there you go, it smoothly interpolates between both virtual cameras. So over here, I can move my character. Now let's lower the priority of this one. And now it goes back onto the other original virtual camera. So the Sin Machine brain is smart enough to interpolate all of the values between them. So whatever camera is active, it takes on that field of view, that position where it's looking and everything. Then you can also inspect the brain in order to modify how the default plan works. By default, it's set to ease in and out and it's supposed to take two seconds, but you can change it to anything you want. So for example, let's say 0.1 seconds, so it's really fast. And now let's lower the priority of this one and go straight down, straight down, just like that. So you see how you have tons of options. You can have as many virtual cameras as you want, all of them looking wherever you want, doing whatever you want. It's an extremely customizable system. Then over here on the menu, you can see that there's lots of different virtual camera types. They're all built to be very easy to use and fulfill a very specific need. So you've got a free look if you want to move around with the camera. 
You've got state driven in order to play around with various states. You've got a clear shot to make sure that your target is always in view and so on. Then down here, like I said, Scene Machine also works in 2D. So let's check this out. So here I am in a 2D scene with my normal player character just moving around. All I have is a basic static main camera. And now here I just go into the menu, Scene Machine, create a 2D camera. And as soon as you do, it creates a virtual camera and adds the Scene Machine brain onto the main camera. So now let's position the virtual camera accordingly and give it a target. So drag the camera onto the follow at. And again, over here, play around with damping and so on. And here we also have a bunch more to these specific features. All right, everything's set up and just run. And okay, here's my character. And as I move, yep, there you go. Now the camera is correctly tracking my character. So you can see a nice virtual camera working perfectly in 2D. And again, here I can play around the priority. So here I have one specific camera, very zoomed in. Then lower the priority and immediately smooths onto the other large camera. So there we go, just like this. I'll go in, zoom in, and go out and zoom out. All right. So you can see how the power of Sin Machine works both in 3D and 2D. All right, so here we'll look at Sin Machine and Unity. Again, this video is just a getting started based on the Sin Machine course on Unity Learn Premium. The course has a lot more content diving deeper into the Sin Machine brain, covering how to make a dolly track, interacting with timeline to make some cool cutscenes, and lots, lots more. So if you want to learn more about Sin Machine or check out any of the over 500 tutorials available on the platform, then click the link in the description. Right now, there's the Grow Your Skills Mega Bundle Sale happening on the Asset Store. It has a total value of over $1,000 for 90% off, including one year of Unity Learn Premium. The link in the description is also an affiliate link, so if you pick up anything through there, you'll also be helping out the channel. Thank you to Unity, and thank you to these awesome supporters for making this video possible. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.